So the Division 2 has entered into its second year, so it's time to create an updated review for Ubisoft's Looter Shooter. With its first major expansion out in Warlords of New York, is it time for players, and especially more solo players, to once again don their backpacks and unload thousands of bullets into bullet sponge enemies with the hope of snagging better gear to then repeat the same thing? Or is the Division 2 worth skipping altogether? Upon release, I found the Division 2 to be a lot of fun and felt it kind of flew under the radar as it didn't really meet sales expectations, but I thought it was very much worth buying and playing, especially with friends. When compared to the likes of its competition, mainly Destiny 2 and Anthem, the Division 2 felt the most polished straight out of the gate with a competent story and length, large open world and plenty of gear plus a decent endgame, which showed Ubisoft wanted to put their best foot forward straight away. It would receive several additional episodes, which added even more content, taking players to the Pentagon and Coney Island, for example, whilst offering new strongholds and missions to complete. But now the largest expansion in Warlords of New York is out, bringing it a return to New York. New weapons and gear, increases in level, more missions and it's for the better, including the newly introduced skill tiers. If you want the abbreviated version of the review, then The Division 2 is still worth playing in 2020 both for returning players and newcomers. And although it will most certainly have issues come up over the weeks and months, The Division 2 is in a pretty good place right now. It's more of The Division 2 that you know for the better or worse, but for myself, it's definitely for the better. Whether I stick with it long-term is questionable, but it has already given me many hours of enjoyment since returning. Now, before going any further, let me start by saying a definite issue many should have with this new update. When loading up the game, players are able to go straight to the new content, where they will be whisked off by helicopter and taken to New York. If players aren't at max level or World T5, then they will be boosted to it in order to tackle the new content. And this is how an expansion should work. So players play the new content straight away, especially in a game such as The Division 2, which takes a lot of time and commitment to hit that end game. But the problem is that if you decide to play the new campaign in New York, then you will be unable to return to Washington DC until the campaign is complete. This should never be the case as you're locking the player into one place and restricting their freedom. If people have squad mates needing help in DC, then you won't be able to team up with them until you finish the Warlords of New York campaign. An even worse problem is for those people who had issues around launch day where they couldn't even play the new content but we're now locked out of Washington DC and they don't have a second character to switch to. Going forward, no game should lock players out of existing content. So with that out of the way, let's see why The Division 2 is in a strong place for the majority of players in 2020. Seeing as Warlords of New York is the most recent content, I'll start by discussing that. From a story's perspective, players will basically be hunting down a former Division agent by the name of Aaron Keener, who has created biological weapons, and then he uses them to attack the base of operations in New York, and so it's up to players to stop him. But before we can take him down, players will need to track down and kill four of his followers who are also former Division agents. The story is good, if not fantastic, and there really hasn't been any story that has blown me away in any looter shooter. But Warlords of New York is worth playing through, and it does offer up a story twist, which will no doubt get explored down the line. Each person you're hunting down will need to be found based upon several leads, and each is located in a different area of the Manhattan map. But for players who may be new to the game or returning, if you haven't played and finished the base campaign in DC, then I highly recommend completing that first, as it's just as worthwhile playing through and taking your time, unless you're really looking to play with friends who have moved on to the most recent content. Before delving into changes that have come about in terms of gameplay mechanics, players have even more to play as Ubisoft dished out several expansion episodes to the game within its first year, which can all still be played. Players can head to Manning National Zoo, the Pentagon and Coney Island to undertake more missions, but these expansions also introduce new specializations and skill trees for players to use and level up. There is a large amount of story content in the game and missions to complete but players will also have access to side missions and control points, which will offer up the chance for better gear. So for any newer players out there, just know that The Division 2 offers a lot of bang for your buck. For returning players, it's really more of the same division with some changes attached. But even though I am impressed with what's on offer, at the end of the day, this is still a loot-based game and it can be very repetitive in nature. And this goes for other similar games, such as Destiny 2, Anthem, Borderlands 3, and so on. 
The reason to keep playing lies not in the new missions or content as much as it is in refining character builds, which I'll get to soon. In the first year of The Division 2, players were tasked with getting to the max level of 30, and that now has been raised to 40 for Warlords of New York. In year one, once that max level was reached, it was then up to players to climb the world tiers and start tackling the harder activities in the game, such as the strongholds, which would open up once reaching a certain level. The content such as missions, control points and strongholds can be played at different difficulties, so as players increase in character strength and level, they can put that to the test in harder activities, which is important, as without more of a challenge or higher difficulty activities, there really isn't much reason to grind for better gear, as you would simply destroy anything in your path. This is an area where I like the direction of The Division 2 over Destiny 2 at the moment. The Warlords of New York campaign will take players roughly 8 to 10 hours to complete, whereas New Destiny story content usually lands around the 2-3 to three hour mark, and that includes having quite a bit of busy work as a part of it. I hope that Ubisoft keep releasing sizable story content drops with variances in replaying the missions apart from trying to get more loot or running it only on higher difficulties. But for year two of The Division 2, Ubisoft has changed how player characters progress and the role that gear and armor have. The changes made are mostly all for the better with a huge amount of stats to keep track of now having been simplified. I found it easier to digest all of the stats being thrown at me with all of the gear that was coming my way. For new and returning players, you can easily see the amount of weapon damage that you are dishing out or your armor rating in terms of your defensive capabilities. Seeing how each new piece of armor or weapon equipped has an impact on your character's power is easily seen now on your infantry screen. So seeing whether that mask or SMG is actually an improvement for your particular character build can be seen quickly. Make the decision, then move on and keep playing. This is important as with how much loot you'll be collecting, plus having RNG involved will mean you can be receiving the same items with very varied attributes. Some you may deconstruct straight away, whilst others may be the much coveted god roll and have at least one god roll attribute or perk. Now one of the largest and most welcome changes comes in the form of the new skill tiers. There are six tiers with a chance for an overcharge effect attached to exotic gear or talents, and the higher the skill tier you have, the more potent your skills will be. For example, as mostly a solo player, I tend to equip the drone which can heal me and nearby allies, plus also equip the turret which fires automatically on opponents in view and range. As my skill tier increases through each of the tiers, the duration of the skill will be increased, as will the healing effect of the drone or the amount of damage the turret inflicts. But how do you go about actually increasing the skill tier? Now Ubisoft has made this pretty straightforward with gear dropping that could have this as a core attribute and this will always be at plus one. So to reach the theoretical maximum of skill tier six, players will need to have six pieces of equipped gear that have that plus one skill tier attached. The effects of having a high skill tier are easily noticeable and is a huge benefit when playing at higher difficulties, especially if you team up with randoms with minimal communication and loadout diversity. With the change to the UI as well, viewing your character screen gives you all of the information at a glance as to how a piece of gear will affect your character abilities. This extends to weapons where you can easily see the increase or decrease in weapon damage as you scroll through the list. This is very much a welcome addition as you'll constantly be going through many items and when trying to maximize a build, it becomes very handy to see how any items affect your loadout. I'm not hugely into having various builds and trying to increase certain attributes by small amounts, but this is what provides a lot of the grind in the end game, and players can hunt down the gear that gives them the skill tier attribute for the build they're going after. Then we come to the recalibration station. Players can of course equip mods to their weapons to increase their effectiveness, but the recalibration station lets players strip talents or stats from unwanted weapons and gear and attach it to items which they preferred and wanted to improve. With Year 2 and the Warlords of New York, this has been taken a step further, whereby a new sub-menu by the name of the Recalibration Library is now a part of the Recalibration Station. This allows players to bank attributes and talents from gear they find and earn, and use those on other weapons and items. 
the bank will slowly fill more and more based upon how many talents and attributes players extract. And these become a permanent part of the library and can be used multiple times. So any of those talents or attributes only needs to be extracted once. The great part about the recalibration library is that it makes a lot of the loot that players earn actually be of some use instead of most drops being worthless. Overall, an armor piece or weapon may be inferior to other gear you have or are using, but that specific item may have an attribute or talent associated with it that is important, as it may be a maxed out stat. This stat can then be extracted, such as high weapon damage, and be added to the recalibration library, and then be used on another item to increase its stats. Ubisoft has also streamlined the process of doing this as any talent or attribute which isn't in the library yet is highlighted so players can easily see which ones can be extracted. This goes for all item categories as well and these talents and attributes will be pulled from marksman's rifles, SMGs, backpacks, masks and more. It is a very well implemented system and ensures that a lot of the loot in the game has some sort of worth and it becomes even more important when trying to maximize a specific build or loadout and this is on top of the gear sets which can be chased. This is one reason to keep playing the game and going after even better gear but the other reason comes in that of the SHD watch which players earn after beating the campaign. This replaces the field proficiency caches from year one and allows players to keep upgrading their agents by grinding more and more XP. The SHD watch is split into four core categories, those being offensive, defensive, utility, and miscellaneous. These then have multiple attribute subcategories, such as weapon damage, critical hit chance, armor and health, hazard protection, skill duration and repair, reload speed, ammo capacity, and more. Each time players fill their XP bar, they will be able to increase these attributes by one point. These have a finite amount of upgrade points that can be put into them, whilst the secondary category by the name of scavenging is able to be upgraded indefinitely and gives players more resources such as electronics, carbon fiber and the rest. Upgrading all of these core attributes will be a serious time sink and grind, which only the most hardcore players will be bothered doing but it makes playing the end game worthwhile to a point. To help with that grind, players can gain more XP by using directives. These are modifiers such as turning off armor regeneration, which increases the difficulty of missions, but will also grant greater XP. These modifiers can also be stacked. So the more the player turns on, the greater the XP they will earn from the activity, which will then allow their SHD watch to be upgraded quicker. Now these directives can also be applied globally, so they exist throughout the entire game world, as can the difficulty for even greater challenge. The Division 2 has more to do than it ever has, and this extends to the seasons as well. So after their campaign is beaten and max level has been achieved, players can complete several objectives, such as capturing control points and completing bounties in order to hunt down a specific number of targets. This is somewhat similar to how the campaign is structured but it does give more for players to do and more ways to earn better loot. But seeing as though it just has players completing activities, which they've done so many times before, I can see a number of players dropping off once again around this point. The grind sets in and the repetitiveness sets in. If Ubisoft can deploy greater variety in these seasonal events, then the more casual players will stick around longer. This can also be applied to farming specific gear in certain areas, which can be displayed on the map but once again, the repetition and grind may be too much for the majority of players out there. Considering I've done several reviews regarding The Division 2, plus the likes of Destiny 2 and Anthem, I can say that I enjoyed returning to The Division 2 and seeing how it's evolved over time. The Warlords of New York expansion is worth playing through and the changes to how gear works, plus the recalibration library, shows Ubisoft is making changes for the better. The Division 2 is in a good place right now for all sorts of players, including those who tend to play solo most often. Similar to issues I currently have with Destiny 2, Ubisoft will need to ensure that each season over the course of the next year isn't just a repeat or too similar to the one that came before. As it stands now, if you enjoyed The Division 2 already, then it might be time to return to New York.